drip, drip, drip. An acidic liquid continuously dribbles down the back of your throat, setting your throat on fire and making your voice gruff. The area surrounding your nose feels stuffy, leaving you with a dull headache. The problem? Chronic sinusitis. So, what causes chronic sinusitis? Well, something has gone wrong with the drainage and ventilation of the giant chambers that surround your nose. There is a long list of somethings that can bung up the works. Think germs, toxins, allergens, polyps, and even cave-ins. Logic says, to fix the problem, you must remove the something. Sounds easy, but <laughs> the devil is in the details. For many, the something is as tough as nails. Neither the body's own defense mechanisms nor man-made interventions like antibiotics do the trick. For others, the something is part of the furniture. Getting rid of the problem can be helpful, but this is not always a practical option. And for a few people, the something remains a mystery. When removing the something becomes a futile exercise, the plan B for chronic sinusitis sufferers is to take out the soldiers battling the something. Antihistamines and steroids can bring relief, but uh, at a price. So is there another option? Well, the obvious place to start is to look at how the sinuses themselves manage the problem. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we learn how the body keeps those sinus passages open. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So, Sinus Biology 101. It turns out the cells that line the sinus cavities are rather special. They're nitric oxide producers. Okay, okay, that is not in and of itself a superpower. Nitric oxide production is something all the cells lining blood vessels do. It's a requirement to do business. As the conduits of oxygen and nutrient delivery, blood vessels need to be able to adjust blood flow to suit the situation. For example, a contracting muscle needs a lot more nutrients and oxygen than a muscle at rest. A lot more. Blood vessels vasodilate to ensure efficient deliveries, and nitric oxide is the molecule that does the heavy lifting. But the need for nitric oxide is variable, so the cells lining the blood vessels do it when required. The cells in the sinus cavities do it continuously. This is their superpower. It turns out they are using a different enzyme to do the job. Blood vessels are using an enzyme called endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, or ENOS for short, while the sinus cavities are using inducible nitric oxide synthetase, or INOS for short. But there is a twist. You see, the INOS enzyme is not all that special. It is part and parcel of the body's defense system. Most of the soldiers who war against foreign invaders have INOS as part of their arsenal, and when called upon, they spew it out continuously in truckloads because it is a weapon of mass destruction. Seriously, it can pretty much kill anything viruses, bacteria, and fungi implode on contact. 
of course, so do human cells. Aish. But it's continuous nitric oxide with a twist. You see, the I stands for inducible. That means the enzymes can be turned on under special circumstances. And you guessed it. The special circumstances are some kind of invasion. Well, this is what happens in the rest of the body. But in the sinus cavities, INOS is not inducible. It's on morning, noon, and night. Which is exactly what you need because breathing is dangerous. Every breath you take in is potentially loaded with germs, toxins, and allergens. But no worries. The sinus cavities are always ready. They're pumping out nitric oxide, which kills the bad guys. Woohoo! But it doesn't end there. The nitric oxide motivates the tiny little hairs to beat up a storm and move the debris out of the way. But there's more. Nitric oxide makes blood vessels dilate, so more oxygen is delivered. Isn't Mother Nature amazing? It's a two-for-one deal. Nitric oxide takes care of the bad stuff in the air and increases oxygen uptake. Mm, you might be thinking, so what? Well, here comes the cool part. It turns out the cells lining the sinus cavity have the nitric oxide switch set on on permanently, but they still keep tabs on nitric oxide requirements. Now, the cells that do this are the ostea cells. These guys guard the channels that link the eight sinus cavities, but they do it in a most unusual way. Most of the time, things in the body are regulated either by hormones, by nerves, or by muscles. But the osteo cells are different. They respond to temperature, humidity, and acoustic vibrations. This means when they get wiggled, they bump up nitric oxide production. Now, it's not so easy for you to control the temperature or humidity of the air you breathe. But acoustic vibrations are manageable. Turns out, humming increases nitric oxide production. Here is what happens if you hum for 10 seconds. Nitric oxide levels skyrocket. The effect lasts for a few seconds and then peters out. But if you do it again, a little while later, the same thing happens. By humming, you can increase nitric oxide levels in the sinus cavities, and more nitric oxide has the potential to help clear the junk, both by killing the bad guys and shipping the waste out, and increase oxygen delivery. So, can you hum away sinusitis? Well, there are anecdotal stories of people who have cured their sinus problems in a matter of days through judicious humming. Could it work for you? And unfortunately, to date, there have been no clinical trials to validate the technique. This is not a big surprise. Clinical trials are expensive to run and no one can make money promoting humming as a solution to sinusitis. But the biology supports the idea. And the practice is relatively harmless when done correctly. Ah, <laughs> humbug. I think it's worth a try especially in the light of the fact that for many people, the traditional solutions don't really work. And when you've got sinus issues, the one thing that frequently happens is you stop breathing through your nose, which ironically makes things worse because you produce a lot less nitric oxide when you breathe through your mouth.
incorporating a little humming into your lifestyle might just create better body chemistry. You could do it prophylactically to prevent sinus problems and when you find yourself with a stuffy nose, hum your way back to health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com, browse our library, or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who battles with blocked sinus passages? Share this video with them so they know how Mother Nature handles the situation and can give her a boost every now and again. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.